I love our fans. I think that I made that abundantly clear in my opening statement when I was sitting here a little uh, less than two years ago about what this team means to me, what this city means to me, and what this state means to me. There's nothing more that I want for our fans than to bring a championship here. And I feel like it's my charge to put the team in the best position to do that. John Robinson's charge from controlling owner Amy Adams Strunk one of the most unusual in all of professional sports. Find the right man to take over a team that had posted back-to-back -back winning seasons, a team that had just advanced to the divisional round of the AFC playoffs. At the end of the day, we were looking for somebody that certainly checked off all the boxes of what we were looking for in a head coach, but also somebody that was gonna be a really good guy to partner with between myself and Amy on a day-to-day -day basis as we run a football team. Amy and I remain steadfast, and the most important thing is the team. Putting our players in position to maximize their ability in all three phases of the game I'm very proud of the success we have had over the last two seasons and look forward to working with our new head coach and moving us closer to and ultimately winning a championship. We all know that John Robinson does not waffle. He does not waste time. His coaching search produced three impressive candidates, three men with sterling resumes and detailed plans for becoming a head coach. But for this moment in time for the Tennessee Titans, one coach, one man stood out. We are excited to welcome Mike Vrabel, his wife Jen, and their two sons, Tyler and Carter, to St. Thomas Sports Park and to Nashville. Mike has come to us with the experience and vision we need to continue what we have started over the past two seasons. I am impressed with his goals, with his plans for his staff, and I believe he will do everything he can to bring this town a championship. I felt like the conversation with, with Amy in that interview process was very comfortable. I told Amy, I said when I left, I wanted to give her a hug, but I didn't think it was appropriate. And she, when she said, well, when you come back here, then you can give me a hug. But there was just a connection there. Kind of the background that John and I have had with our time together, you know, in New England, there was a lot of similarities that we you know, learned in that organization. He's all about the team. You know, we've talked about for two years, putting the team first, being a tough-minded person. Um, having a, a detailed mindset to not leave any stone unturned and you know I think he, he he embodies all of those characteristics. I think that the the city certainly is appealing the number of guys that are here that, that care about the um, people other than themselves they care about the team so there were a lot of factors that went into you know the job and it was a great opportunity for me. Mike Vrabel has been preparing for this opportunity since he started playing football as a youngster just ask some of the people who know him best, former teammates, his college coach, and even his high school football coach, the legendary Jerry Reardon. Mike Vrabel, from day one, he was an amazing person and an amazing athlete. He'd come into your classroom, I remember he'd sit in the front row and his smile and comments would light up the entire room. And I'd hear that same thing from every teacher. He'd just say, oh my gosh, is this kid fun to have in class? He's always in a good mood, he's always smiling, and he's always bringing the class up. You knew that he was a special guy. You really like Vrabel. Oh, I do. He's been very good all along, but he's getting better. I think the best way to describe Mike as a football player was that his motor never stopped. I mean, he would literally live, breathe, sleep, eat, think football 24-7. And when he walked into this Woody Hayes facility, all his focus was, how can we get better today? He not only was a good player, he made players around him good. If you weren't doing something to the best of your ability, to the fullest extent of your energy and effort, he would call you out on it. And uh, he, he would make everybody around you better because of that tenacity and that attention to detail and that, that focus to be the absolute best at his craft. When his playing career ended after 14 NFL seasons, Mike Vrabel wasn't finished with football. Former Ohio State teammate and roommate Luke Fickle was the Buckeyes' interim coach in 2011. 
and he gave Vrabel his first shot at coaching. I had known all along that he always wanted to be a football coach and I'm going to coach, I'm going to coach and to know what kind of passion he has for the game of football, obviously intelligence and, and smarts. I wasn't worried about is he going to be able to understand, is he going to be able to relate. No, I, I knew that was going to take care of itself. Whatever he takes on, he's not going to take it on slowly and now I'm going to learn here. Mike's going to jump in with both feet. When he came to Ohio State, it was amazing watching him interact with the players. It's like he's been coaching for 20 years, you know, he knew you know, how to push, he knew how to motivate, he knew how to talk to him. When he walks in the room, there's a presence. And some people say, oh yeah, it's because he is 14 years in the NFL and you got three Super Bowl rings and you know, you have this persona. They said, no, he was a high school kid coming out of uh, Walsh Jesuit High School and he walked in there on his official visit. And you know what, he's had that same kind of persona and that same personality and that same outgoingness that, uh, that just captured a room. What you see with Mike's what you get. He's gonna be up front, he's gonna be, he's gonna be aggressive, he's gonna work hard, nobody's gonna outwork him. If he doesn't have the answer, he'll find it, he'll find it. You know, he's that, he's that kind of person. I think coaches, Coach Cooper's always told me this, that, uh, you know, if you got a bunch of different people and you're, you're gonna ride on a, on a horse, somebody's gotta drive it, somebody's gotta lead it, and that leader's Mike. The greatest leaders I've ever been around are those guys that you've seen kind of mature, you've seen grow, you've seen go through those hard times and continue to fight to come to the top. And I think that uh, as guys see him, they realize that. And as he sees young guys, whether they're coaching in college, whether all of a sudden it's in the NFL, he sees a lot of that. He knows darn well it could have went a lot different for him if he'd have been on a different team. Something would have happened here, something would have happened there. So I think the, the perspective is so unique that he has and, and going through it. I think allows him, along with the personality and the, the natural charisma that he has, just those kinds of things allow him to, to mesh and, and relate to you know, guys in, in, in those situations that are fending and fighting, not just for their lives, but for their jobs and for their families. When I stand in front of these guys and they look at their head coach, I will have been every single one of those players in those seats. I'll have been the, the rookie that got drafted, that was having a tough time, that maybe wasn't developing as fast as the coaches would have liked. I will have been the core special teams player. I will have been a starting linebacker that was uh, expected to make some plays because he was a high-priced player. I'll have been the aging veteran that needed to be a great leader, or I'll have been a team captain. So I'm gonna have a, a, a great opportunity to share my story. Everybody's got a story, and everybody came from somewhere different, okay? Some guys were in the first round, some guys, this is their second or third team. Okay, Batesy, what how many teams have you been with? Three, Three teams. Right? And he's found a home here. And so we appreciate what everybody does. And you guys can learn from these guys that have been through different journeys. It's not all about, you know, draft parties and, you know, first round picks. It's not all about that, right? It's about coming together as a team, working, developing, and getting better every day. We have to be able to, whether you're off the ball or on the ball, is be able to, to play, start just like this as I start with my hands here and just throw my hands and let my feet follow. You're gonna strike them, sit down. You're gonna strike them, then you're gonna control them and you just shed me and throw me wherever you go. Mike Vrabel motivates. Perfect, but just... That's all it is. Do you see that? That's really natural. Do it again. He gets what is important across clearly. Towards the locker room, okay? There's a sign, it talks about practice. Does anybody know what that sign says? Practice execution equals game reality. It's from Ohio, right? It's from Ohio. It's got a higher IQ. It's science. I apologize. He demands nothing of his players that he doesn't demand of himself. When somebody says we're counting on you, that's a pretty cool thing to have happen to you. Right, Supernova? If I said, man, we're counting on you, that's exactly what you want. Hell yeah, count on me, count on every single guy next to you, okay? If you're not involved in special teams, you're with your coach, you're in the training room, you're in the weight room, you're in the cafeteria. Because the idea is when somebody's working, everybody else is doing something to work. This is Mike Vrabel. What's the player's job, Harold? What's your job? Don't overthink it, just look right there. Know what to do, play fast and aggressive. Know what to do and play fast and aggressive. That's your job. Take the meetings to the field. Leader of men. Eyes, Rashawn. Good, let him go leader of the Titans. The development and watching a player improve is my number one goal. And so that's, that's our job is to teach, to develop and inspire the players to, to 
be able to execute their job. And if you thought this was exciting. That's all we need right there. We don't need much more than that, dog. Wait until his team puts on pads when the full stamp of Mike Frabel's football life will be placed upon the Tennessee Titans. It will become fully clear why Mike Vrabel was the right man at this moment in time for the Tennessee Titans. Stay tuned. There you go, perfect guys. That's it. Great job, good. Here we go, moving on over. Next time on Igniting the Fire. Hey, watch the nickel. Watch the nickel. We take you under center to see what's new for the two-tone blue passing attack. You only have X amount of times when you can get out on the grass with these guys, so you got to make every opportunity count. I want you to start working on when that ball's in here and you outside the numbers. I want you to work on setting that dude and getting here on them dudes and try to pull them. As the new coaches work with the quarterbacks and receivers on a new identity. Right now, we're trying to establish our foundation, our culture, and that's what's going to help us build upon as we move forward into the season. All right, here you go. Set. Ooh. Ooh, Dime. Dime. Any words of wisdom for the people? Say hi. Hey, appreciate it, y'all. <laughs>